Coach, thanks for spending a little time with us here this afternoon. Sure thing. I want to ask you uh, in particular about Justin Fields' growth and where you think that he's taken the biggest step forward this offseason. I know a lot's been made about what he's done off the field, but when you get a chance to actually work with him physically, where, where is he most improved? Well, again, a lot of the work we've done uh, till recently has been, you know, maybe not against the defense because we're trying to stay separate, you know, as far as going against live people. So, uh, uh, but I know uh, Ryan uh, and Coach Dennis have worked uh, hard with him just to continue to enhance and clean his fundamentals, knowledge of the game. We've done a tremendous amount of work with uh, blitzes and trying to understand where the issues are so that he knows where his answers are when there's a, route that needs to be broken off or he needs to alert the route to be broken off or he needs to change the protection. I think probably where he's grown the most is a year ago he came in as the quarterback, but as a new guy, I don't think he tried to force being uh, a little bit more of a leader now that he's had a great year and he's, he has some great leadership skills. I just think he's doing a really good job of, uh, of, uh, of being a little bit more of what you think that quarterback's going to be as a strong leader. So uh, he's had a great all season and been a weird all season, but he's, he's, it's been great. I apologize. I'm look. I'm looking at the speaker here, like I'm talking to you. See that? <laughs> no problem. Thank you. It's a great speaker too. It's got like Bose sound or something. It's very nice. <laughs> all right. Next up is uh, Dave Biddle from 24/7 Sports and Jared Smalley on deck. Dave, you're up. Thanks, Mike. Hi, Kevin. Thanks for doing this. Um, I know Coach Day calls the offensive plays, but I also know you're heavily involved with everything the offense does. Can you kind of explain your role and just how much say you have in the design of the offense and the actual play calling on game day? Yeah, I, um, I mean, it's a, a, it's a lot of group stuff in general, meaning, you know, so much of what we do goes during the week or in the off season where the whole group's there. Um, you know, and as a coach, you know, you're, you're working with your position guys and you're bringing to the table their strengths and weaknesses or, you know, if this is a, a protection or a route or a, a concept we do and you have some players struggling, you need to get them up to speed or we start moving in other directions. So it's a lot of group stuff with, you know, the run game. We kind of started early in the week of game planning, myself and Coach Dudrawa and Coach Alford uh, with that, Coach Hartline, Coach Dennis, and Coach Day kind of get the pass. We spend a day or so separate. We kind of come together and we kind of built the basic game plan. And then by Tuesday, it kind of evolves into third down and scoring zones. Um, Game day, there's a lot of talking after the drive. Uh, what, you know, like Ron will say, hey, what do, you, what do you think's your two top runs next time? What do you think we want to go with? Um, I might make a suggestion if I'm concerned with protection that I think we need to do something to help with the pass rush because being a line guy, I like to kind of help that old line out with coaches through draw. Well, so sometimes the play calling and the rhythm of the calls and things you can do to, to help a tackle get his job done or move the pocket or get the ball out of the quarterback's hands to – alleviate some stress to the line. So it's a collaborative group. When we get going, there's not a lot of talk. Um, the best time to talk is as soon as the play is called and before we even run the play that's happening. Because once that play is run, being a no-huddle team, we're kind of into the next deal. So we've got to do a great job of minimizing conversation. I think me and Coach Day have very similar thoughts. I think I see things through the eyes of alignment a lot. He sees it through the eyes of a quarterback and a skill guy. But I think collectively, uh, I enjoy working for him, enjoy working with him. And, you know, I, I, I think we, we, we were pretty compatible. At least I sense that. You can get more thoughts, but I think it's a good deal. Just one more quick one from me, Coach. How do you think – how do you see things kind of shaking out at the running back position this year? Um, I think every year you got to have more than one. Uh, it's even getting to the point in the college game with their tempo, you need to maybe have more than two. You need to have three. So, right now – Master has came off his injury and, and looks like he has a chance, especially with the season being delayed. He's doing everything and looks really good. Trey has came in and looks – he's very smart, looks very good, catches it well, understands well. We haven't, I haven't seen him, you know, with pads and in the, in the practice, hard practice environment or the game environment. You feel comfortable there. And, you know, uh, Crowley's still a little bit uh, – Mark is still a little bit out there with, uh, with, his, with his injury, not quite full speed. So, from there, it's kind of been – Falling on steel chambers, we've moved uh, uh, Xavier uh, Xavier Johnson in there. He's done a nice job for us at, as kind of a hybrid guy. You got Demario McCall. Those are two kind of hybrid receiver running backs. So we got five guys that are getting a lot of work. The bulk of it's being split between Master and um, Trey with the ones, and then Steele and the other guys are managing our second team right now. 
I, Thank I, you, I, Kevin. Think, I, I think it'll be a 50-50 ballpark as we start. Thank you, Kevin. Next up, Jared Smalley with WCMH Channel 4 and Tim May on deck. Jared? Hey, Kevin, I wanted to ask you about, uh, I think it's next Wednesday, you have an opportunity to actually play some real football in terms of uh, blocking and tackling and making the contact you want to make. Can you run me through um, that feeling you've had to deal with the last couple of weeks here of not being able to, to play at the speed or, or at the uh, intensity you want to play in order to prepare for a season and think, how you intend to do it when you are actually allowed to go full speed in that regard? Well, we've talked a little, although not excessive on that, so I don't want to lead. Here's exactly what's going on because – uh, it'll be interesting. It's kind of always a day-to-day -day thing. Um, I think, first of all, I think Coach Day, with our coaches and with team meetings and with the whole staff, has done a great job of trying to teach our guys. We are practicing really great without pads. We're staying on our feet. We're playing low on both sides of the ball up front, but we're, we're not falling down. Because you just worry about somebody stumbling and getting a cheap high ankle sprain or a cheap knee injury or something like that. Our skill guys are challenging us in coverage. We get some, a fair amount of man coverage. But as we're, we're able to throw the ball, guys aren't colliding and falling on the ground where you get the cheap shoulder, ACL kind of sprain or whatever. So our guys have done a phenomenal job of practicing. When the pads come on, you guys start getting a feel of what it's like to play at the pad level you need to play with, the velocity you need to play with, the way you come off the ball, get off blocks, the way you run through trash, the way you finish tackles. And we just can't do that the first day when pads are on. Because these guys have had a long period. We missed spring ball. We, so it ain't like all, all of a sudden now we got games in four weeks, the first day of pads, just go out and for two hours hit. We're going to have to be very, very smart in how we build that volume up because that's where, you know, most of the concussions happen early in preseason practice. So I think we're very smart enough with the medical staff we have and Coach, Coach Day's background that we'll be slow to go and build as we go. And I think we'll probably get as much contact and work in the second week of, of, our, of our start as we will the first week. And I think we'll try to get in because school is going on almost like the flow of a game week early. It won't be the old school, just practice, practice, practice. But we, we are going to need some blocking and tackling, and we've got to be a great tackling team. And, man, we were really good up front last year. Those guys are back. But, you know, an O-line's like a boxer. you got to get back in the, in the, in the, in the training, and, and you got to pound a little bit to get really, really good. Thanks, Kevin. Well, Next up. Tim May from the Tim May podcast and Austin Ward on deck. He's got his own podcast named after him now. Oh, yeah. Coach, I got it. Who knew, who knew Medicare wasn't free, man? That's why I'm looking at it. Uh, number two, uh, I'm also at LettermanRoad.com, but I digress. Uh, real quickly, you may have answered this at the beginning. I just got on right as, right as you started. But what did you guys miss most from those 13 days of spring or whatever it was that you didn't get in? And uh, – from an installation standpoint, is there still a lot of work to be done in that regard? I think the, uh, the way the summer has been allowed to go with us getting those activities, we probably ran more plays. We'll have a few of you know, the top players going, but they'll probably tell you they've ran more plays and the young guys have gotten more plays. So I think our freshmen, our young quarterbacks, receivers on offense, our young linemen have gotten more plays than they normally would have gotten in a normal preseason. I think the thing we miss – you know, you go through spring and you have some contact and we talk about it, but you do pop the pads off. You have to restart in preseason. I think the thing we've missed is the young guys, they're really getting some of those tough days, some of those tough summer workouts. And even though they're working out, it's a little bit different when the group's not here, the team's not here. So I think, you know, you worry about those. And I'm not talking just the high school freshmen coming. I'm talking about the, the kids who were redshirted last year that really need that great all season. Yeah. They probably got about a third of that. And, a lot of times that second year is when a lot of these guys pop and start coming through for you. It'll really be interesting as the pads come on, how some of these red shirt freshmen put, like in my room, Cade Stover, how's Cade going to be? Because he's, he looks well, but he did miss a, a good chunk of what the normal player would have gotten. And does Justin Fields look like, what is the, can you put into words, because you get to see this guy every day, compared to a year ago, what is the biggest difference you see in Justin Fields? My wife would be pleased to, for me to tell you that he's been on a vegan diet and he's, he's done a great job. He's leaner. He's faster. He's done a great job taking care of himself. He's a more complete player. And I said earlier, Tim, I think a year ago is back, but a new guy, he didn't jump out to necessarily be the leader. I think he's more comfortable being one of the strong leaders of this football team and of our offensive unit. Thanks, man. You're welcome.
Next up, Austin Ward with Letterman Row and Bill Rabinowitz on deck. Austin? Hey, Kevin. Uh, I feel like we've had this conversation a number of times with Jeremy that every year it's, you know, trying to make a more complete receiver. What do you see as the next next step in that evolution for him? For Jeremy? Yeah. I think for all of them, and it started in spring, we had our best, and you'll get a chance, and I've got Luke over here ready to come up. They started spring ball. We talked a lot. We did a lot of study of some NFL guys, and we actually talked to a couple guys about how fast they played. And we even looked at some of the guys that have now gotten strong enough. We didn't think we needed to keep adding weight, that we wanted to play faster. And we challenged our guys, and I thought we did a great job those first three, four practices we had in spring of really rolling. It's continued. It's been a little different because we haven't had the pads. But I think it's playing faster. I think it's one year they're all older, they're more confident, they've had more time, even though it's been away to some degree more time with Coach Mix training, so they're stronger, their bodies are more mature, they're really gotten strong in the blocking game. I think even Jake's had his best offseason, so it's a great group of guys. I just think you're going to see them playing faster, and with that, I think the quarterbacks are getting more confident and comfortable in making sure as they go through the progression, they're giving them a right peak as long as when it fits the time and the play and all that, so... Uh, Excited to see how they play. They're going to play. It's been a, it's been a solid. We haven't had a, a ton of touches sometimes. It's been a it's been a strong unit, and I, I think it's got a chance to be the best we've had since I've been here this year. Just to follow up uh, quickly on that, like when you're talking about the NFL guys that you're sharing clips of, who is it that you want them to emulate, and, and what is it about their games? I don't know if it's emulate, but you just watch how fast they play in the running game, blocking game. Uh, we even had a couple Zoom calls with a couple guys. I remember one of the comments, the guy says, man, I'm just trying to – about mounting up, I'm going as hard as I can. And sometimes, you know, I think in our guys, we, we try so hard to be perfectionist that when you're thinking, you really can't cut it loose and go. Now, we cannot be – there's a fine line between being out of control. But I think as, as these guys have matured physically, but more than anything, matured with confidence, I think they can, they can feel free to cut it loose if they make a mistake. It's not the end of the world. And I think they understand how to fix problems while we're practicing or while we're playing. So if they overshoot a guy and take a poor angle – they don't freak out about it. They just fix it. That's a part of being a good player is just adjusting as you play. And uh, they've gotten to the point they understand me, they understand us, they understand the offense, they've grown. I think they have a chance to be special players for us this year. Next up, Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch with Nathan Baird on deck. Bill? <laughs> Bill, you're, on, you're not coming through. It's our first Zoom technical technical difficulties here. Try again there, Bill. No. I see him. Yeah, he just moved and he's back on. Yeah. Hey, hey, Bill, go ahead and type your question and uh, and we'll get to it. And I'm going to move on uh, right now to Nathan Baird with Cleveland.com. Hey, Kevin, you mentioned the 50-50 the split with, with Master and Trey. I assume that goes potentially beyond – just having two healthy backs for the offense, like for, as, as someone who's, you know, coordinating the offense, what does that give you as far as maybe their complementary skills or how does that open things up for what you and Ryan want to do with an offense? Well, um, I, I, you know, again, we don't have enough with Trey yet to say, okay, it's this or that. We're still bringing steel and the young guys along. And when I say it's, it's, it, you know, I would anticipate coach Alfred getting to where three guys are playing I think when we practice right now, my players can tell you with the amount of plays we get in the tempo, we go, it's kind of nice to have two guys or three guys per group because as practice goes, you can complement each other so that you can practice well. So it's one thing to say complement each other. Hey, you know, this guy's a good pass blocker. This guy's a good inside runner. This guy's a good outside runner. This guy's a good route runner. In reality, you want him to be pretty good at all things. You don't want to always put a guy in and never throw him a ball. So – We'll keep enhancing and develop them where they're very balanced. I think the best thing about having the depth we have at that position, the depth we have in the receiver position, the depth we have at tight end position, is as we practice, there's competition. But as we practice, they can give each other the breaks in practice. So when they practice, it is fast. It is full speed. It is game speed. That gives the quarterbacks great timing. It gives the, con the uh, offense a lot of confidence. And I think that's the best part about that split of, of stuff. It's not necessarily game reps or what the offense is going to do, because I think they allow us to pass block, run block, inside. I, mean, I think we're going to run the offense of all those guys. I don't think it changes a great deal. Uh, but the best thing is 
it allows us to practice at an unbelievably high level at skill play with skill players. Just real quick, why why is a leaner Justin Fields a good thing after this vegan diet? Well, my wife's a vegan, so I thought I'd just throw it out there and you know, for all the veganistic people out there that are is veganistic a word, Luke? I don't think it's a word. It is now. Okay. Um, no, I mean, I, I just here's a kid that wanted to, to, to become a great player, and part of that he knew was taking care of his body. And I think we got a lot of guys that are like that. We, you know, Coach Mick, and, and that we put a phenomenal amount of resources in here into what's provided for our guys. And it's one thing to have training table, a lot of food, but it's the type of food that's teaching guys how to eat. He made a commitment because he wanted to be a little bit leaner, wanted to take care of himself even better, wanted to be faster. He just made a commitment to a style of diet. Not that that's the perfect diet. It was the one he wanted. And what's neat is that our nutrition people here were also able to complement where every day, even within our – we might have steaks and chicken or whatever going on in the meal. He has a meal set for him that we're able to provide, which I think is pretty cool. And we have a couple of kids that are actually doing that. It's the style that they want to eat. And I think that's awesome. But I think he just did to be leaner, take care of himself, and – be stronger and faster and he looks that way he's a stronger faster player hey bill go ahead you want to try again see if your mute is uh off yeah no it's not it's not working i'll go ahead and ask you uh bill's question uh you mentioned on the radio show yesterday about osu having the most overall individual talent you can remember is that since you've been at ohio state or anywhere you've been in your career and then also, could you elaborate on the challenge of getting that individual talent meshed in the midst of limitations caused by the pandemic? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, um, individually, there's, I mean, there, there was a couple of those teams in my time in Oklahoma that were extremely high talented uh, teams and these guys prior to playing. But to me, as, as a team and as a player, it's at the end of the season, when you look back, you can say you're that kind of team. And that's where I think collectively it all comes in. Um, we got to do a great job because of all the skilled guys of finding guys. It's one thing um, I said this yesterday. We had a lot of guys opt in. The key is guys need to make sure we keep buying in because I think that's the key, buying into what it takes to play as a group. That offensive line pounding it up front and those bags getting the yards, but they're getting yards because we're – we showed a great clip yesterday of a receiver coming off full speed looking like a route, and here comes one of our fast running backs right behind him on a running play. Then we showed a, a clip of a, of a guy on a perimeter pass where a wide receiver had to make a critical block. Then all of a sudden we take a great shot and, and Garrett Wilson makes a tremendous catch on a deep ball that everyone would see, but nobody saw the tight end tackle and the tailback do a great job of picking up a twist and a blitz. And so we're trying to convince the guys, again, as you keep saying, if we can play as a group, collectively you can always get more than you will individually. Now that's hard. It's, it's easier said than done, especially in this day and age with all the dynamics and social media and players getting pulled with families and friends and give me my touches. But if we can – keep our egos in check, continue to buy into the brotherhood of what we've got. I think we have a chance to, to be another very, very, very strong football team. It all starts with those guys up front, and that skill is very, very strong. There's some young receivers that haven't shown a lot yet, but when they get a chance, it's going to be a great receiving core. If those bags come through, I think the tight ends are very, very undervalued by a lot of people. It's a great group. It's a, it's a tremendous, talented football team. Great. This, folks, this is going to need to be the last question for uh, Coach Wilson. No, I need – I got you one more, uh, Kevin. Uh, next up, Bill Landis with The Athletic, and then we'll let Dan Hope open up with uh, Luke Farrell. So, Bill, go ahead. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, Kevin, you guys played more with, with two tight ends last year than, than I think Ohio State has played it, within a while. Um, how do you see that maybe expanding this year, especially when you bring back guys like, like Jeremy and Luke, who I'm, I'm sure you want to have and, – and Jake, who you want to have on the field a lot? Yeah, um... The tough deal is um, with the receiving core, the way, you know, Jameson's come on and some of the young freshmen like Jackson and Julian and G and those guys um, were taking out a really good players. So I think it just gets in the flow of the game. I think these tight ends can flex out if we need to. They're very, very strong. Jeremy and, and Luke and Jake have all gotten where they're so fundamentally stout and strong. They're quality in the line of scrimmage so they can do a nice job blocking for us. I don't think we need to force it. I think we just get into the flow of the game, and as Coach Day's calling it, we get going. We can always go to it. We can flex those. If we can flex them out, we can go big. And if we put those receivers out there, it's it's about as collectively fast and athletic a group of receivers I've ever been around. So, as a tight end coach, I like those tight ends playing, and I don't like it when those fast guys come off. So maybe if we can sneak sneak a Canadian game in and get a couple twelve guys, it'd be okay too because we could probably play that way. But. Uh, uh, 
their run blockers, their pass. It's, 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 um, I guess the trick too, what we're saying that we got to make sure that we, as we keep everybody happy, we just don't get too much offense. And as coaches that we get so smart for ourselves. And that's one of the things, the pandemic, you, know, you got a lot of time to sit around, maybe think too much and start out thinking yourself. And so we got to find a way to, to keep it where the, these talented group of guys can cut it loose and fly around and do a great job for Buckeye Nation. And when you, when you bring in a new back like, like Trey from another program, do you um, look, look at what they did at the place where he came from at all and, and try to find some, some schemes that he might be comfortable in and, and add them to your run scheme at all? Or you just kind of work them into what you guys have always done? It's always – I think you're always uh, looking at other people. And we've always studied uh, uh, the Oklahoma offense for, for, for years. And, uh, um, and so we, we always have kind of seen things they do. A lot of their running games kind of similar. Um, but if you did you – know, we haven't had a bunch of transfers. But when you do see a kid that comes in and has a unique skill set, you try to play to it. You just got – we just got to make sure, Bill, we don't – like I said before, when we have – some talent. We just got to make sure we don't try to force it. It's, it. When you try to make everybody happy, you can't. We just got to keep everyone buying into the brotherhood, playing together, and doing a great job of rep- representing the Buckeye Nation on Saturdays this fall. And and so we didn't. We didn't really. You know, uh, we do a lot of things similar to Oklahoma. Not exactly. Uh, you want to know if we run the tackle, tra- the counter, the tackle play? Is that what it is with both of them pulling? Yeah, I didn't want to mention it specifically, but that is yeah, what you, you want me to call Bill. We actually run that play. We just have so many plays, we don't get to it. But I'll I'll tell I'll call Coach Beaton and tell him you talked about that, okay? I, I appreciate it. Thanks. See you guys. Oh, thank you. Hey, you guys take care. God bless you. See you.